All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So imagine you're driving along in your RC rock crawler, and you come across a shiny lake of liquid metal mercury placed by the evil Count Cody. <laughs> and you see that there's some orphans stranded on the other side of the lake. Could you drive across the lake of mercury to go rescue them? Well, let's find out, shall we? Hey, you guys want to pretend to be the orphans? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to save you orphans! <laughs> okay. So, the first uh, thing I thought of is if you drove across the mercury really fast, you should be able to hydroplane across it, right? Uh, you can do that with water if you're going fast enough. But what if you got to the other side, right, and you had to stop? Well, you don't want to get stranded. So, let's make sure that the car can actually float. So in order to float, we have to displace its own weight in mercury. And ideally, the amount of mercury that the wheels displace should weigh as much or more than the car. And that way it's not dragging bottom. So, let's uh, set it in here and see what happens. There we go. It just sits right on the top of the mercury. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now that floats pretty high. The mercury is incredibly dense. Now there is one problem I'm seeing. I can just blow on the car and move it around. It has very little friction now. So if there's a windstorm, you probably wouldn't want to do this because the wind would just push you along. <laughs> but let's see if the car can actually drive. So we've driven down into the lake. Now let's push forward on the throttle and see if we move. Ah, no problem. Let's see if we can back back up now that we've rescued the orphans. Right on to the other side. Perfect. That worked flawlessly. A lot better than I thought, too. It didn't spray the mercury around as much as I was thinking. And you see what's uh, going on is the treads are actually able to like grab the mercury, kind of like this. And it's basically able to swim itself across. And it doesn't have to throw the mercury very far, apparently. The mercury is just so heavy, it doesn't really need that much reaction uh, velocity. <laughs> uh, there are a few bits uh, flying out of the tub, but I have this bigger tub around it to catch anything that makes it all the way out. Oh, there we go. Alright, see if we can steer it this way. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can really steer it. a little. It doesn't steer all that well. Maybe if the front tire is moved as well. Maybe if it was four-wheel drive. We'll see. Maybe I can turn it around. Okay, so we do have some steering control. Five minutes later. <laughs> How about let's get some uh, high speed footage? That ought to be cool. Now, I bet you guys are wondering what would happen if I were to drive a life-sized vehicle on a pool of mercury. Now, my truck here uh, has about the same stock weight as that uh, little Bronco would have, uh, except uh, one major difference is this one isn't tricked out with a, a lifted suspension and giant tires. But, all right, what about these little tires? Would this be enough? So, these tires are 28 inches 
wide and there's a 16 inch rim and uh, let me grab this measurement right here okay so they're eight inches wide and that's not including this little bit of a bulge here so our estimation will be slightly under let's uh, plug this into a calculator and see what the volume of the, the actual tire is Okay, so let's uh, first do the inside diameter. So that's 8 times 8 for the radius squared times pi and then times 8 inches for the width. So that's uh, 1600 inches cubed for the volume. Now that's going to be removed from our total because the, the, the rim itself is doesn't have very much volume. Okay, so in the, the full size, so that's a 14 inch radius so that's almost 5,000 inches cubed, so that subtracts the 1,600. That gives us a volume for the rubber part of the tire of around 3,300 inches cubed. So now let's convert this to gallons. So let's uh, divide that by 231 cubic inches per gallon. So that's about 14 and a third gallons that this tire makes up. Now let's say we sink down only about halfway. So divide that by two, and then there's four tires. There we go. Now mercury weighs about 108 pounds per gallon, so that's uh, 3,100 pounds that it would be displacing, which is quite a bit more than the 2,700 pounds that the truck weighs without any passengers or cargo. So you've got about 400 pounds excess. So that means it's gonna float probably about right around there. Let's see, how high is that? So it's going to sink in about 13 inches deep into the mercury. Now unfortunately, the clearance on the rear differential is only about 8 inches, so it would be scraping that. But that would be enough that I think it would still be able to drive, although very slowly because of the drag. And of course, if we tricked it out with uh, bigger wheels and stuff, then yeah, it would work. Uh, one more thing I'll point out, uh, the little RC car actually is a bit too heavy to be the correct scale. If you take this truck, or indeed the vehicle that that uh, model is based off of, and decrease it by a factor of 15, it doesn't become 15 times lighter, you know, 1 15th, it actually becomes 1 3,000th. You double something's radius, you octuple the weight. So if the original vehicle weighed about 3,000 pounds, it would weigh about one pound for the model if it was everything to scale. You know, if made of the same materials. But the little RC car actually weighed about one and a half pounds. So it was actually a bit too heavy. So the real thing would actually sink less far into the mercury. <laughs> so yeah, if you had a lake of mercury big enough, it'd be totally possible to drive on it. I've got enough mercury that if I were to build maybe some little boxes around the wheels and then lower the truck into it and then fill it up with mercury, I could probably get the truck to float a little bit. But I think I've sufficiently proved my point. I don't think I'll be doing that, at least not in the near future. Uh, the rims here are actually steel, so they should be fine. Uh, you take a car like this with uh, aluminum wheels and uh, it'd probably destroy it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. So static cling is causing a bunch of little beads of mercury to stick to the car, if you can see. And so I'm just going to use a can of air duster to blow that all off.